ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Rising Star vs. Invasion MUFC. I am Luminous, I'm joined by BTS Goss. This is a Beyond the Summit presentation of the AMD Premier League. We are in the third place uh, decider, a constellation final, concession finals, whatever you want to call it. We are in the third place uh, decider, best of three series, game number one. It's been quite an early start for us, and hopefully we have enough energy, because after this we have the great grand final, which is going to be a best of five. And that's going to be featuring Zenith versus Tong Fu, and that should be a very good matchup. But for now, uh, we are on the first pick of uh, Rising Star. They decided to take up Shadow Demon, and that's going to leave one of the more OP heroes in the pool, Wisp. And nobody uses Wisp in these in East Asian so never mind. It's going to be Vision MCC, first and second pick as well. Uh, well, we say no one, but Rising Stars did pick it twice yesterday, so we'll have to see if they go for the Wisp here again today. MUFC, not a team who uses Wisp. They want to pick up one of their supports early on. They get themselves a Rubik um, and a Queen of Pain as well. So fairly standard, just strong laning heroes. Um, MUFC like to go for their sort of early smoke ganks, like to have mobile supports around the map. And right now, that's the kind of heroes they've got. Ooh, so we're going to see a Clockwork here and an Anti-Mage for Rising Star. Yesterday, we saw a ton of Clockwork for Tong Fu going straight solo mid. And it didn't seem like it mattered who he was laying up against. I think most of the time, it was the Magnus. And he was basically the Magnus counter, kind of really preventing the counter initiate and whatnot. I'm not personally sure whether I like Clockwork so early here, because generally, he's one of those utility counter heroes. Good against melee heroes, good against BKB heroes. Not exactly too good against what we have so far. I guess it's somewhat decent against Lone Druid. But for the most part, you generally pick up Clockwork when you want to combo up, when you need to some have AoE crowd control, like a mini puck of sorts. Uh, when you have things like Meteor, for example, or a insert yeah. spell that needs kind of AoE setup. Well, and so far, we don't have that. My favorite um, Clockwork play from yesterday was the solo kill on the Queen of Pain at level 1. Oh yeah, that was pretty sick. <laughs> so, who knows, maybe Clockwork's actually a secret counter to Queen of Pain. But... Yeah, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> Um, Lone Druid picked up MUFC, so they grab a powerful carry of their own. I think MUFC with a very strong first three picks. I, I think the Clockwork, like you say, picked up fairly early. I think teams have been mostly picking it in the first three stage, but it's not going to be a particularly strong choice against Rubik or Queen of Pain. Uh, against Lone Druid, it's so-so. I feel like if they're in a, if it's an offlane Clockwork against a Lone Druid, Clockwork's going to lose that lane, so... All in all, Clockwork isn't a direct count any heroes, but I feel like he's always a fairly strong choice for any lineup. Yeah, I mean, a lot of utility I, I kind of mentioned from his cogs. Let's not forget Rocket Flare is a great counter initiate to any Blink Daggers. It's a great Roshan check. It just gives you a ton of kind of not exactly game breaking utility. It's just always all around good. And that's why he's kind of moving up the ranks, creeping up a little bit in terms of the pick man order. Uh, we're in the second band stage here, and Juggernaut's going to get the axe. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. We'll take out Juggernaut. We'll see, probably see some. I guess for the most part, MUFC have. Well, they have one of their carries in the Lone Druid. They also have the Queen of Pain. They don't have to pick up another hard carry. They may be looking for some more sort of utility, something like a mech buyer or something for the offlane, like the Darkseer, which they ban out themselves. So Rising Stars, they've got one of their solos in Clockwork, but they need to have one of their others, which could probably their solo mid. I don't know if they want to send Clockwork against Queen of Pain, although with a fast bottle, you can do okay. But Clockwork just does fit so nicely into that offlane. Yeah, I mean, I guess some invasion. Invasion MUC is somewhat afraid of the vacuum into the cogs combo, which can be somewhat annoying, or have the cogs and vacuum and have them bounce around, like instant 200 mana drain, that would be a pretty cool combo. Um, and of course, Darkseer and Clockwork could switch up the solo mid and the offlane, so I guess the ban is somewhat making sense, although both Darkseer and Clockwork generally uh, kind of relegated to the offlane row. Bane's going to be the second ban up here, which I'm somewhat surprised. I don't think Anti-Mage too, cares too much about the Bane, but with that said, uh, Infeeble is always annoying, Grip's always annoying, so gonna take rid of that hero. Yeah, I think it's more... I, Infeeble and Nightmare up against the Lone Druid Spirit Bear is probably the, the main main factors there. Um, and also recognizing that MUFC need another support to go with the Rubik. Both teams need their secondary support, so probably looking here is like the Leshrac, the Lina. Jakiro even gets pulled out every now and then by MUFC. Uh, Rising Stars especially, they've got the Shadow Demon, they need to have some sort of follow-up stun or some follow-up aggression. The other big option is always going to be the Chen, which is still in the pool, hasn't been touched by either team yet. Yeah, Chen's going to actually be quite a kind of an insane pushing force, especially for Invasion MUSC. Uh, Mid-game give you the Lone Druid as well as Chen push. I don't think Rising Star needed as much. 
I don't really see any kind of synergy. I guess the synergy you have for is disrupting your anti mage while you're sending him back, so he always survives any kind of initiation, which is pretty strong. But uh, we, we don't see it too much, and I don't think Rising Star will pick it up. Yep. Um, just remind you. Uh, make I, sure I, I have WTA turned it on. Working. Yes. Cool. Thank Thanks. you for the viewers for reminding us in the chat. Yep. Appreciate it. Cool. Uh, so both less track leaner. They're the last two bands. So the two follow up stuns taken out of the pool. Jakira gets picked up. So Rising Star is going to be the one to actually grab it. Shadow Demon Jakiro, not a huge amount of damage output, but so much protective capabilities for the anti mage. Even yeah. Clockwork offers that. I feel that he generally he's a kind of a weak laning hero because his damage is so low. Um, especially, I, I guess it's okay with Shadow Demon disrupt, uh, disruption setup. Generally, you disrupt and then you have the Ice Path fly out, and as, as soon as they pop out, disrupt, they're frozen. So it is actually a quite a okay kind of spell against Queen of Pain or any type of blinker that needs to get away. But with that said, the damage output is so low that I don't really see him as a powerful ganker. So I imagine both Jakiro and Twin, uh, Jakiro and Shadow Demon will mostly be focusing on early game pulls. Maybe they'll do a gank or two, but it's not going to be your standard SC Lina, SC Lashrak ganking, where it's going to be high damaging, high success rate, and, and whatnot. Yeah, I, they're, they're going to have to get some big levels before they can consider ganking someone like a Queen of Pain. I mean, Disruption, Ice Path, and a Clockwork aren't going to be getting kills there. I think for MUFC, I guess maybe they can consider going offensive trialing now because they are against. Um, an anti mage, and they have a lone druid who can win any one v one matchup, and they pick up an enchantress. So this is aggressive. This is hinting towards the offensive trial end, but the big problem is there is always getting the enchantress into the enemy jungle. Shadow Demon Jakiro can just sort of zone you out and cause you quite a few problems. So maybe MUFC are just going to be looking for a safe lane. I'm not sure whether I like that the enchantress pick here. It's it's really good on paper. They have anti mage. Let's pressure them early. But if you look at it, how are you actually going to get any tower Axe. kills? Be oh my goodness, Axe is going to get the pick up here. So yesterday we saw Axe being played by MUFC against Zenith. They, uh, I, I think they accomplished their early game object objectives very well, which is to shut down Tinker's farm. They did. They was able to tower creep skip, tower dive, and, and do a ton of work. But they weren't able to transition their Axe into a mid game. The Blink Dagger was like a 25 minute Blink Dagger, which was simply too slow. Let's see if it's going to be a similar game today where they creep skip, and this time they're going to have the Enchantress creep. I was going to say, with the Enchantress alone, they won't be able to push and kill. But with the Axe now, it, it's totally different. And and sure, there is going to be a Templar Assassin pickup, but I think Axe matches up against this uh, Templar Assassin rather well. You throw a Battle Hunker on top, and suddenly her refraction is nowhere near how good uh, it normally would be. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool little pick for that creep skipping, and the Enchantress does sort of fit in pretty well if you're looking to, to creep skip to push down really fast, to be able to grab those, grab neutrals to protect the axe from any sort of aggression. Aggression from Shadow Demon Jakiro Antimage is not going to be all that scary at the early levels, at level 1, level 2. Um, that You can't really go on them, you can't really kill them, but they don't have a whole lot of damage output. So I think this is a an interesting way to play it from UFC. They're going to have Lone Druid in a, probably a 1v1 matchup against Clockwork in the top lane. They have Queen of Pain up against the TA at mid. So both their solo lanes should either be pretty even or advantageous for MUFC. So I, I, I like their lanes. Yeah, MUFC's got to win every one of their lanes. Uh, I mean, Templar Assassin and both anti major great farmers. And they're great killers once you give them enough farm. So, and of course, Mofi, I, I think he's going to have to be the X Factor for his team. He know his team is going to be under stress early on, especially on that bot lane. I mean, is there any kind of thing you say, all right, we know they're going to be offensive tri lane. Let's actually just put Clockwork bot and put our offensive tri lane top, even though we have an anti mage. Any thoughts on that? I don't think it's a good idea. I think the two, the MUFC supports can too easily rotate, and Anti Mage maybe gets farmed for the first three or four minutes, but then rotations come, then he gets sort of messed up, and the game just kind of becomes a weird little game. And Clockwork can get first blooded right off the bat with just diving his tower with neutrals. His tower will go down right off the bat, most likely, and then with the early tower gold, MUFC can just send heroes top to pressure the Anti Mage wherever he goes. I think it's just. But he's got cogs to push away any ganks, right? Well, I, I don't know how that's going to work against Axe in chat. Well, he's going to have no creep wave. It's the main thing to protect him. I suppose so. Okay, well, we'll see he, how, how MUFC as well as Rising Star do yeah. lane this. But I imagine if they send the Shadow Demon Jakiro anti-mage on the bot lane, they're going to lose their tower very quickly regardless yeah. of what they want to do. So maybe some. that's why I kind of suggest maybe it's smarter to dodge it, but we'll see. Yeah, I'll be interested to see how the, the Shadow I think the big key thing here is, is go at... 
level one, send four or five heroes out to your own jungle, prevent Enchantress from easily accessing your jungle, because if Enchantress can't access your jungle, it's going to slow down MUFC quite a lot. So get some smart wards up, uh, protecting your jungle, somewhere near the bottom river or just the bottom lane, and then whenever you see Enchantress coming, go looking, even if you're not killing her with a Disruption Ice Pass, just do a lot of damage as, as early as possible to this Enchantress, because she's not going to have heal at level one, so... I think there's still ways for Rising Stars to even win this try lane versus try lane at bottom. I don't think that it's just a straight up, oh, they can't hold their tower, they lose. I think if they play it smart, they can win it. Also, because you know, and again, I'm putting all of this in an in, in egg basket where I say MBFC is going to go offensive try lane with Axe. They might not even have to do it. They could just run straight up defensive jungle Axe if that's all they really care about. But I imagine that's not going to be the case. But assuming offensive trialing axe, assuming the fact they're going to threaten to cure tier one tower, you could also have your clockwork, for example, pick up a teleport scroll rather early, have a point into battery assault, and make sure that your carrier has your dual breath at level one. Suddenly, when they're diving your tower, when they're creep skipping and whatever else they're doing, you cheap in with battery assault, you, you dual breath, and suddenly the gank is going to be turned against them right under your protection of your tower. So that could be pretty good. All right, we'll get things out of the way. Big shout out and round of applause to Luminous who uh, figured out how to click a button in XSplit. Hey, I I would <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. No, truly good sight. Um, all right, MUFC they're setting lots of heroes bottom, which I think they realize they need to get in chat. Both teams, we may even see like a big level one clash here in the bottom jungle, just because both teams know how. Or level one Roche. I mean, Chantress picks up a ring of Basilius. Interesting. No, heading downwards, but. Early Basti, this means less HP regen, less stats, and there's no branches or anything. This is kind of risky. I guess Rising Stars didn't bring the TA. TA is now coming. Uh, also, Lone Druid not on his way. He's actually just sending a Spirit Better Scout, which is the smart thing to do if you're MUFC. I really like Mofi's ro rocket. What he basically did is he sent the rocket basically in the path of all the uh, MBFC members, and it didn't do any damage. But more important thing is it, it gave sight, and it checked out every single member of MUFC's starting item. Which normally doesn't matter too much, but in this case, they will see Enchantress, uh, Basilis first, and maybe they will get a little bit more information. Like, yeah. I, I kind of guess Ro Roshan, Roshan first, but the, the other thing they could do is creep skip and, and push quite a bit. So now they will know for sure that the aggression is coming early. Look at the response coming out from Rising Star, warning off their own camp here. This particular war will see into the river and the camp, uh, and it blocks the camp, and that's the big, big thing here. Yeah, and we'll, they'll also have another word further right, which is going to see both yeah, Rubik and Enchantress no. coming to their jungle. I imagine they look to do some aggression here, do some damage. They saw Axe so not here as well, and Rubik difficulties. needs to be very careful with his positioning. Well, that thing's going to get dewarded, I imagine, very quickly if the supports yeah. have any sentries, and there is one on Jakiro. So setting up these early wards and using this sentry to actually block off one of those jungle camps, well, I think Rising Star is completely prepared for this. Yeah, they deal well behind their tower. I think the, the other big thing is here that this Enchantress, level 1 Bass Searing, it's great for pushing, but it's actually pretty weak if you're fighting the, the opponent's head-on. Well, well, we'll see how much uh, head-on fighting they will do here. You can see that Axe is trying to right-click on Anti-Mage, draw a little bit of creep aggro, and they'll get those creeps attacking on him, get those spins going on, and get that push going on, because they can't really die past the tower right now, because they don't have sight. And look at the harassment coming in. They're actually going to mid-kill Ice Path as well. Oh, they're going to try to remove the HP. Half the HP down. They're going to blink forward, trying to body block for that first blood. I think they might actually get it. They need one or two more range attack. They are going to get the range attack for, and it's going to be first blood being drawn by Shadow Demon. Your offensive trialing is done. What a play from Rising Star. Yeah. Some, some big body blocks here. This guy, he's actually a really like young new Chinese player. I remember I was talking to Riss, the former um, N9 captain. He's like, man, I don't even know where this guy came from or how like the Chinese teams found him, but he's such a good captain. I'm yeah. sorry, such a good carry. Mid lane though, they're gonna lift him up. There is gonna be refraction, but it's only level one refraction. Where is the shockwave? Shockwave's on cooldown, and here's some fix the terror creep. And nice. now back in mid lane, sorry. Queen of Paint is Did gonna grab the kill. So stop. normally what we're used to is some sort of passivity for the first two, three minutes, but really action out of the gates here. Yep, oh, Shadow good. Demon's already towards the mid lane though. He's picked up some boots here, which is I like this from Rattle from uh, I keep saying Rattle Rattle Stars, Rising Stars from Rising Stars, because while TA is not in lane, someone's actually getting the XP, maybe a couple last hits here. And uh, this is just being as efficient as possible. The bottom try lane has been completely abandoned. Axe has gone to the jungle. Yeah, MUFC, this, this entire strategy of theirs has just fallen apart in less than two minutes. I think that's the correct response here for MUFC. Not to say that, you know, 
it's a good strategy considering giving the AM free farm is never a good thing. And now the two supports could do whatever the hell they want. They could pull, they could, well, they can't really pull that much because <laughs> they blocked off their own jungle. But I think it was a smart response in MBFC's part because if you try to force this, you're going to lose more kills. Your axe is not going to get farmed. And right now, axe is one of those heroes, like I said yesterday during our class. He gives you about 20 minutes of good game. Uh, maybe 25, you get a blink dagger. But after a certain point, he's going to be somewhat of a useless hero. And uh, About time. good thing that he's going to go back to the jungle and try to get some early game farm. I, my main worry is I just don't know how MUFC will handle a free farming big anti-mage uh, who's split pushing all over the map. I don't feel they have the best lineup for doing that. They have got not a, not a whole lot of lockdown, and I feel like they're going to be relying a whole lot on ending the game early with this lone droid push. But with Axe's slow start... And with a hero like Queen of Pain, Queen of Pain not the best aggressive pushing hero, it may be hard to end the game early. Well, I, I think both Queen of Pain and Axe have to snowball hard. And both these heroes are very capable of snowing, uh, snowballing hard. When there is like a level 5 Axe breathing down on you and you're a level 2 Shadow Demon and you have a Battle Hunger on you, you're pretty much dead. And I think yeah. that's the scenario that MBFC is going to be looking for uh, throughout this game. And it really does help that Han Trash player had a first blood, or had a kill on arrow in the mid lane. So. We'll see whether uh, the, the snowball is going to come, but like, I agree with you. If they don't get that really early snowball, they're, they're going to be in huge trouble. Yeah, even right now, well, right now Lone Druid Anti-Mage is pretty much dead even on farm, but I still feel Anti-Mage is going to get the better out of that trade. Lone Druid, not quite the same menace and flash farm as Anti-Mage is once he gets his Battle Fury in. Rotation now towards the mid lane. Shadow Demon Jakira are there looking for this Queen of Pain. Disruption not going to come out. Jakira actually still smoked up, so it was a smoke gank, not going to seed, and this is where... You mentioned at the very start, they can't really easily gank Queen of Pain. They're trying here, but unsuccessful. They're just wasting a bit of time. The real action's going to happen top lane, though, it looks yeah, like. Yeah, they are going to battle uh, dive here with the battle hunger, and now all the focus, all the right click. There's those cogs, but the cogs don't really help against range attack. There's a kill, and it actually goes to Winter. And it looks like Winter oh, XCD comes back in. He's going to be in huge trouble to a second Battle Hunger, which is going to come in a couple seconds. There you go, Battle Hunger, and that's going to be slow being applied. Right click's going to follow through. I don't think XCD is going to make it back to base. He's Tango. He's trying to right click. Uh, boots. He's, he does have boots, and that's the big Same. factor. He Radiant might actually make it back all the way to base, if, especially if he tangles up. Yeah, he does. He's going to be okay. Ling tried to do some body blocking of his own with the Dark Troll, but not quite as impressive as Yao Tuji's earlier body blocking. Dark Troll doesn't have Ling, so... No breaking through the yeah. Well, they trade towers, tier 1 for tier 1, and I I think, well, if Rising Stars can get this one tier 1 tower, I think it favors them, because Antimate with a very early tower kill, this could make give him a battle for you at like 11 minutes into the game or something. I don't, I don't think it's as bad for uh, MUFC. Uh, it's a definitely a negative trade here as Shao Tuji doesn't last at the tower. I, I think the Radiant Heroes could use early game go a lot better than the... Or excuse me, the Dire Hero could use uh, the, the go a lot better than Radiant Hero. I mean, if Lone Drew wants to go for a quick armlet, basically every MBFC hero has to go for a kind of a mid-oriented, mid-game oriented item and then go for the mid-game win. Uh, meanwhile, you know, I don't think Anti Mage is going to be going for any kind of mid-game items. She's probably going to be going for a Battle Fury. Yeah, he's... Oh! Almost definitely going for that battlefield, but there's actually a kill on the Lone Druid at top lane. Well, he's very far out. Mophie with XDD get done. I don't know how that one happened. Yeah, Meanwhile, he, bottom lane, Axe taking a lot of damage. Yeah, TFG is actually taking a ton of damage here. Out of mana at this point. He does have six wand charges and could be actually popping it to get a get a battle hunger off. Yeah. Gotta be very careful about his positioning though. Yeah, Zouch usually wants to get that level 6 because then he can maybe be looking for a little pick off here. No, pops a Tranquil boot, so Axe not really killable anymore. And yeah, Zouch usually is farming well. Um, looks like, actually, you know, he's almost doubled the Lone Druid CS all of a sudden. That big push at top lane slowed down the Lone Druid CS because they were creep skipping, they were just diving past the tower. That means Lone Druid not really on par with Anti Mage anymore. Yeah, it looks like this Enchantress trying to set up a little bit of gank here. Um, I think it, a little bit scouted out by this Generation. trap that was recently laid. I don't know what this Enchantress can do at this point. You're not really going to get a gank off in the mid lane. Sure, they got that big dive, but now that uh, TA is level 6, she has tr she sees you coming with traps. Uh, she has Observer Ward on the high ground too. Yep, yeah. and she has high level refraction. It's going to be hard to push. It's going to be hard to gank. And looks like Mage trying to slam down this uh, axe. Will succeed in doing so. He gets the kill in the end. XCD. Magic wants going to save himself from Winter. Drops a Soul Catcher. This could be the end of Winter as well. Can XD live this? It doesn't look like he will. Anti Mage though. Gets himself a double kill. Not worth for oh Winter. This, I, I really am scared for how, how big this anti-mage is getting right now. Yeah, this anti-mage is going to have one of the earliest battle here I've ever seen. Getting tower fed to him, getting kill fed on him. X TP's back, but he's not going to do anything this lane. 
Yeah. Uh, I guess Antimich has gone for the treads here, but that's allowed him to be more aggressive. He's gone for the one in each point, uh, skill point, as well as a l three points in stats, so giving him a lot of extra HP, agility, uh, and just all-around damage. So this is a strong build to go if you want to be going for that that, that fast battle fury, which almost every Antimich does do nowadays. And he sort of pushed back out of this lane with with Axe TPing in. He doesn't want to be too aggressive here, take too much damage. But all in all, Ryzen starts with a fantastic start. I mean, we haven't even talked about the TA, who at mid lane is farming pretty well as well. Hasn't really shut down much. And Queen and Pain, you mentioned this hero has to snowball. It's not really happening, at least not yet. Yeah, Han Trash player is definitely taking a very farming oriented role. She does have a teleport, does she? No, she doesn't even have a teleport. And that's a big issue because Axe is being doved upon. Imagine if. Uh, uh, Hunter Ash player had a TP screen on that bot fight. Back in the top lane, it looks like we see a little bit of offensive initiation. The trap's gonna get dropped down, and nice TP of the teleport scroll. Cancel the teleport scroll, and I think YY is gonna be dead. It's gonna try to get a kill. It's gonna be close, but Mofi, very tanky, and it's gonna survive through that. Oh, smoke, Centaur actually coming up. Smoke is coming from behind, though. The Centaur coming in directly. Can they actually get any pickoffs here at the top lane? Meanwhile, bottom lane, actually, Axe gets a kill on Jakiro. And this smoke gank top not doing a whole lot. They just decide to back off. Ooh, Axe might actually be in a little bit of trouble. There yeah. is going to be a uh, huge uh, slam. Pops, pops a magic stick, which actually Sorry. might be the wrong thing to do against the anti mage because that's more mana Consider that he can burn. And those mana burn fine. hits take a lot of damage. Mana yeah. break hits. Well, Zaltushi, another kill. He's 3 0 and 1. He buys his Bride's Broadsword up, so he just needs the Claymore, the Void Stone. He's about 2k gold away from his completed Battle Fury. Aaron, really nice uh, Mel dodging. See him dodge multiple Shadow Strike hits. In fact, Contrast player could be going for a kill right now. Nice kill here. Burning away those Refraction Charge. TA thought he was unkillable. And Contrast player thinks, says Nick again, man. Yeah, I think he was just trying to... He was trying to like double fake Contrast player there. Be like, oh, I'll just pretend I have Refraction up to cast again. When in fact, he had no Refraction. He was still on cooldown. And that caused him some problems as he gives away a kill at mid lane to Queen of Pain. I think that's a big problem. You want your Queen of Pain to snowball, but like earlier it was a level 7 Queen of Pain. Level 7 Queen of Pain, blink, blinking, teeping around the lanes, can't really do a whole lot. You need to get that sort of level 9, level 10 where you can get really strong, which is where Hon Trash player is now. So maybe we start to see him rotate, roam around the map a bit more now. Well, we'll see if he's going to survive against this gank. I'm not sure whether that's going to be sword. The hook shot a little bit too short. Ice Path's going to get dodged as well. Hon Trash player giggles himself and says, this gank failed. Gonna go back to farming, got a double damage rune. Does have a teleport scroll skill. I wonder what the item choice is gonna be here for Han Trash player. I think normally you go for quick orchids and try to shut down the anti-mage, yeah. but it's a little bit too slow. I think I think anti-mage is well beyond that point. Yeah, you're gonna get at least one or two ganks off, but uh, by the time your orchids is done, his battle fairy and manta is gonna be done. That's gonna be a big issue. Yeah, it, it really depends how fast he can get this. And Queen of Pain farming all right, I guess. Um, maybe you can go for the fast orchid. If you can, it, you'll get it around up the enemy just battle for it, just whether or not he has the manta. It's gonna be a big fight on the mid lane here as Jakiro throwing out a ton of AoE deeps. Air is gonna be fine, Jakiro is gonna be fine, but there is a Invis Queen of Pain coming through. And I think Super is gonna be a fine target for a kill. Maybe he's gonna rotate all the way top here as Mofi taking a little bit of entangle damage. I think that's exactly what he's gonna do. So again, Queen of Pain needs to snowball, needs to find random pickoff. And good to see him, he's actively using these runes. Invis rune being picked up, immediately popping it, and try to attempt to set up a kill. Yeah, it's the Rising Stars are playing very passive. They're just seeing on this T1 tower if there's not willing to give anything up. Antimage, he's got his Perseverance now. Battle Fury coming up very, very fast. And Winter. He's going to be the one TPing bottom lane. He realizes he needs his level 6. And I think that's something where MUFC are struggling with. Right now, they're behind on levels. And some of these support heroes are pretty level dependent. Mid lane here. Disruption into Ice Path. They want to get that Quab. Quab will blink out. She's low. The Purge is on top. Got to swing. Oh, no. Not even going to survive to do anything. Clockwork Hookshot's going to get the kill. And Aaron now drops off a big Mel Strike. Blinking from anti-mage of all heroes. TFG's on the run. He's going to go down to the Urn as well as Mana Void. Anti-mage showing up to fight. This is they something that we don't see too long. often from any other anti-mages. Really reminiscent of Black. Yeah. And, uh, well, didn't work so far. It's cool timing because he just finished pushing out the bottom lane and farming it a whole lot. Like they, He couldn't really be in bottom lane much longer, so he buys his Perseverance and rotates towards the mid lane. Gets a kill and then immediately TP's top where there's a big creep web waiting for him. So as far as farming goes, this anti-mage is very, very efficient. Yeah, and he's gonna have, I want to say, a 13-minute Battle Fairy Treads with a Crawling Blade, and that's that's where the farm train leads the station, and uh, I don't know. I don't know what's waiting at the end of that station. Air is gonna be a little bit of trouble in the middle. He might actually get lifted. Spell being stolen, that's a refraction on Rubik. That's pretty cute. 
I'm hoping give them a bit of extra survivability in some of these early fights, maybe. But I, MUFC, I mean, we haven't seen the axe pick do a whole lot yet. This, I mean, at all this game. It's one, four, and two. It's maybe sort of help get a kill here or there. But all in all, TFG just very under farm and. MUFC, I feel like they were banking so much on getting that creep skipping going, but the early first blood, and now all of a sudden, MUFC, I don't know if their backup plan is going to be enough with the Lone Druid and Queen of Pain trying to carry them. Yeah, I feel like Axe is a hero that somewhat relies on surprising your enemies, and if you don't get the surprise factor off, it's very easy to actually counter Axe, because he's not really too good of a hero. Sometimes, I want to say, even in pro games, maybe it's a little bit smarter to actually give him a quick level 3 in the jungle, and then start harass and terrorize the asylings. But um, that's not exactly what we saw in this game. That's just kind of game, uh, game uh, plan B after kind of getting owned in lane, which damage hasn't been done by then. Well, MUFC decide they need to do some damage. They're going to try to get this tier 1 mid tower, but pushing into Jakiro, not the easiest thing to do. Also a maxed out Shadow Poison on Shadow Demon, so he's got extra points in that. And once you start getting a couple stacks, this is hard to push into as well. Yeah, Winter does steal himself an Ice Path, which is a, a kind of a premier spell that you, can, you yeah. want to steal. Uh, but I don't think that's going to help them really push as four heroes is there and so far they're not solving this problem that is known as anti-mage and there you go we're going to see a battle fury right about now yeah he's got the battle fury up and the rotation coming in is not going to do anything at all FZ I think he realizes well he needs some farm for himself if they're going to be ta well it is going to a sort of a, a late late game scenario or at least a mid to late game scenario and anti-mage farming much faster than this lone druid he needs to start catching up and doesn't even have the armlet yet, and we, well, I guess we're 13, 14 minutes in, you wouldn't expect it quite now, but he's still a bit of a way away from it. He was safely in farm, he's got himself a tower kill, I mean, you do expect yeah. it, it's just that he's got picked off of multiple time. Um, I don't want to say his impact is low or anything, it's just that right now, they have about 5 minutes or so to actually pick off Xiaotuji multiple times, if not, this game is just over, like, it's just so hard to actually compete on the same level of farm, especially the way that Rising Star is playing. They're not making any mistakes, I want to say. The rotation from Anti-Mage was so good. To the yeah, mid. the farm and the, the gold is great, but just the overall hero levels. Anti-Mage is level 11. The highest MUFC hero is level 9. And then you've got level 9 Clockwork, level, level 10 TA for Rising Stars. This Anti-Mage, his levels as well as his farm is going to make him almost unkillable this game. Yeah. Taking hits. So far he's just rising lane. Looks like they're going to make another go here on FZ. The Clockwork Cogs is actually going to push him away. Missile attempt, not going to be too big of a deal. Anti Mage is going to go back and hit the jungle. I like the rotation up top here by TFG. That's going to at least force an Anti Mage TP, which I'm not exactly sure how much that's going to accomplish. But hey, you know, at least force yeah. some TP out. Yeah, Anti Mage will be quite happy to get a bit more farm at this top lane. And uh, MUFC, I guess TFG, trying to look for a blink dagger now or even finish off his drums. Whatever it is, it's. He's only got 850 gold here, so not farming all too well. Mid lane, disruption. Uh oh. Winter, uh, dead. Yeah, Winter not gonna go live that one. Disruption into Ice Path, kind of an easy, easy combo setup. And whatever snowball that I was trying to mention that MUFC needs to happen, it really didn't happen. As uh, only five kills here on for MUFC. Rising Star's gonna pressure mid tier one. And anti yeah. Well, oh, he's yeah, nice jukes here on, on TFG. Does have the teleport scroll and 10 charges on the wand. He's gonna be fine, but hey. The team is in bigger trouble. It's here. One's going to go down the mid lane. Jakiro gets the last hit on that one. And this is Jakiro who's going to have a pretty pretty early mech as a hard Radiant support. Bottom tower ain't a pretty and anti mage right is going to pressure tier one by himself. He's going to get the last hit on this tower. And Axe with a hook shot. Axe gets hooked up. Purged down by Shadow Demon. This is another kill for Rising Stars. And Chantra is coming in. May actually get some cleanup kills here. Queen of Pain, nice disruption coming out from Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon should survive this. I pass. Gonna save the Shadow Demon's life, so some great defensive play here. Super probably gonna be brought down here. Queen of Pain does have an ultimate if she wants to use it, although it doesn't look like Contrast player wants to throw it out. Oh no, anti Mage now blinks in, and somebody's gonna get Grand, grand Slam dunk right now. We're combining two sports into one. And, uh, well, there there go. we go. Grand Slam dunked. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta one, one step up that dunk. It's Grand, it's grand Slam. Is that's that baseball. Ten? Okay. And I gotta say, that's kind of the most boring sport to ever watch. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure what we are talking about when you said Grand Slam. Yeah. Like, tennis is Grand Slams. Is it really? Well, no, it's not like a... Te like, the Grand Slam is like the name of the tournament. Uh, grand Slam is when you... Actually, I don't even know. I'm not sure. Isn't when you uh, hit a home run and, like, your base is loaded? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's Grand Slam. Gotta make sure that I get my Americanism correct. America. 
Fuck yeah. Yeah. Alright, so we have Enchantress farming in the jungle with drums. Good, good, good. We have Oregon. Well, I don't, know, I don't know if that is good, Lumi. <laughs> it would have been good like 10 minutes ago. Yeah. Um, axe. Oh, sorry, Low Druid farming in the jungle without armlet. Good, good. <laughs> yep, good. Yeah. Oh, with armlet. No, he's got. This is with armlet. This is now a little bit better. But yeah. Contrast good. player, uh, Oblivion Staff number one. Good, good. Yeah, uh, I I, just, I don't see MFC doing anything in this game right now. Yeah, I, I, it's it's not over. I, MFC can look, always look to capitalize on Rising Stars' mistake, but if everything goes according to plan, which for Rising Stars is a pretty easy to execute plan, it's just anti mage, keep on farming, get your Mantis style, get your heart, become unkillable, push out all lanes. There's no way Rising Stars lose. But yeah. this is always professional Dota. Not everything always goes according to plans. EG fans out there know that very well. Yeah, shots fired. <laughs> IG fans uh, out there know that as well. Remember that? Remember that game that we casted together, IG versus Zenith, and the last game was so trolly. It was Dagon fives all over the place, and they almost actually lost. What game? Oh yeah, yeah. that was it's, that was actually the G1 like the deciding match as well to yeah. go to the land final. I remember I was thinking this. I'm like, and Zenith won the game two with no bans. Yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. And the game okay. three, I remember it was Zenith well. picking up this like insane AOE combo with Naga sleep and. Tombstone and all that stuff, but I think IG fans don't know that. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> As I say, professional don't know anything. Can IG fans don't know that because IG fans, IG always win. <laughs> yeah. For them, it's like everything always goes according to plan. IG win, that's expected. It's like IG bro, fans are happy. What does that throw? I mean, if there are there Dota two lounges bet for these uh, DSL coming up because I think I think if you ever want to win some rares, putting your your rares on on IG is. The safest thing you could do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's like, I guess they have a. The groups for the DSL, like, I remember when I first saw them, I'm like, okay, they're, they're pretty good. But now I'm like, man, these groups could be kind of stacked. You've got Group A is like IG, LGD. Um, well, you have a nine team Chinese tournament. Like, BG no gaming. matter what group you're going to have, it's going to be stacked. I feel like Group B is just. Like, Group with. Uh, no, sorry, the group with uh, DK is slightly weaker. But that's neither here nor there. What is here is this axe getting caught out once again. He's just had a very sad, miserable oh, game. Queen of Pain's gonna come in here. They're gonna be doing a big, big ultimate, but unfortunately, Ice Path really slowing them down. Air gonna get surrounded by three or four. The question is, where the hell is the anti mage? Where all of this anti mage still rising away? Air survives through all of it. Ice Path like drops. Shadow Demon dies, but he buys back. And that's gonna be the end of that one. A buyback on a Shadow Demon is all they forced out. Anti mage will now join the fight. Lock on focus initiative, yeah, from FC. And Mofi might be a little bit in too deep here. He might actually go down before anything happens. Anti mage in the middle, two hits, three hits, four hits, and that's a well, grand slam dunk, as one would call it. That's gonna be one kill. He's looking for FC, FC, praying for those entangles, not gonna have it. Double kill for AM, and I think it's gonna be a race down the mid lane for that tier two. Contrast player trying, oh, just TP's out in time. The Shadow Demon destruction on cooldown, Ice Path just man manages to not nip him. And Zhao Juji straight down the mid lane. He's 7 0 1. He's level 16 with a Treads, Manta, Battle Fury. This has been one of the more impressive anti mage performances I've seen. But I always feel whenever anti mages do something like this with some insane GPM, it's more. It's, it goes back more to the overall strategy and just sort of execution rather than like some spectacular individual play. He played well. That's, that's oh, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember that body block that he did in the yep. first one? That was good stuff. But uh, yeah, I completely agree with you. When you allow this uh, free farm anti mage shoot to happen, uh, it's, it's gonna be a little bit rough here. And I was gonna about to make a joke that I'm glad this is not the Eastern qualifier because we might see a 800 plus GPM game, and I haven't had that selected. I'm not actually sure if it's gonna be 800 plus GPM. Let's quickly check that out. It's only 600 right now. I think that Shout DG needs to some take a slam to the next level to get some ultra kills or something before he gets that 800 plus GPM. Well, I. I think he still can do it. It's it's anti mage. They haven't started taking down all these. The thing is, your GPM always skyrockets when you take, these, take towers, take yeah. all the towers, take Raxes. And if anti mage is the one doing all the pushing, he'll quickly go up to about 800 GPM. With he the also tower goal. he also needs to step it up during the hut farming during the end of game. Like oh, yeah. those give you a ton of gold. You gotta make sure yeah. you get those last hits. So I think I think that's the game plan that Shao Tuji is on right now. Oh, well, I, I don't know if he's too worried. He's probably saving the 800 plus GPM depending on what his. TI3 East Qualifier Compendium predictions are. I wonder if like there's players out there who like try and do stuff just for their Compendium. 
I mean, hey, why the hell I not? I think AL are like, come on, guys, we need to get this level one Roshan just for our compendiums. Gotta, gotta. Uh oh, Shao Tu might be and in trouble. Oh, wait. JK. Oh, lift and into stop, one. stop. Oh, where's the stop? I nice was lift. out of mana because the Manta illusions were doing work. Winter found the real one instantly after the Manta style, but it didn't really matter too much, and doesn't matter too much as Axe gets caught out as well. I think if you have your lift selected. Before he mantas, after he mantas, your hero just finds the right one. Which I find yep. a little bit dumb. But, uh, it's okay. Well, I'm. I wouldn't be too surprised to see MUFC tapping out soon. They're, I mean, I, 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 okay, knowing Winter, I guess that they're a team who won't actually GG out until it's properly over. But this, this anti means they have no, no counter to. We saw it there. They four man gank him. And they can't kill him with the with the orc with everything thrown him. That was a perfectly executed gank, and they couldn't kill him. And that's with just the B, the B three Manta style. If he gets a heart next, which I imagine is what he goes for, there's no way in hell they kill him. Go Vlad's next, please. Step it up. End the game quick. I think heart helps end the game faster. I think it's, if you want to end the end the game as fast as possible, I think heart's the best time to do it because you can just push suicidally or just. Push with your team, just go high ground, and they, they, no one can hurt you. Or if they do hurt you, you back off, and then you heal it all off. It's safe to say that anti mage could get whatever the hell they want. He could pick up a blink dagger right now, and that will end the game. Yo, IG out. style, get some dagger five. Yeah. Get, a, get some blink and slam action. And Chantra is gonna get caught in his jungle. Mofu looking for the hook. No, twin head. Gotta hit that gym. You're blocking. You're blocking. Twenty two three is gonna go down regardless. Super might actually pay for it. Yes, he does. They're gonna get one kill. In fact, anti mage not being here is gonna allow them to lose a couple heroes. Dyer's not giving up, and I gotta commend him UFC for that. Yeah, XDD's yeah. gonna get picked off here as well. One more blink and a scream, a couple more right clicks. Right. Here's the thing, Anti-Mage is gonna be coming yeah. on the back lines. Yeah, he's looking for pickoffs, he's looking to take this fight, and there is a fairly low Rubik. Queen of Pain's already down to half mana, there's some juicy targets. Yeah, nice Mantis, uh, Mantis dodge, both the Silence as well as the Shadow Strike. FC's gonna try to run out of there, but ooh, nice Entango, slowing this one down, but one more blink's gonna come follow through, Milk Strike. Big mono boy's gonna follow him. Yep, that's a double kill. He's got like, and that GPM is on the rise. Oh yeah, up to 670. Come on, Zaltuji. Keep on doing this. He's up to 4.5k gold as well on top of this. T2 tower will drop, it looks like, at top lane. Everything working out pretty well for Horizon Stars. They did lose a couple heroes there. As far as team fights go, that's about as good as MUFC are gonna get. Yeah, right. and this is not to say that MUFC has played poorly or anything, it's just that their early game execution had to be perfect. Because they're playing kind of this Dyer's early game based lineup. They lost down. the early game and that's that's all she wrote. Yeah. T two tower brought down and MUFC gonna Dyer's still keep on fighting. I mean the real big issue is they have no items. The only hero with items is Queen of Pain with an Orchid and starting to work on a BKB. Lodrid has the armlet, but at this point, twenty five minutes in with all these found heroes on the radiant side, armlet doesn't really mean a whole lot. GG. There's a GG I'm, being put out. Yeah. I it's over. I I fully agree with this. Yeah. I, let's go game two, MUFC. There's no point sort of just, I guess, a slow, painful death by anti -mates. They don't want to experience for their, their overall morale going into game two. I'm not sure how slow it has been. It's been like... Yeah. Just, like, just a painful death. It seems like it's been longer than 25 minutes, but yeah. Rising Stars did not take long at all here in game number one. They're going to be chasing uh, FC around until he taps out. FC says, no, man. This is where you leave right now. I don't see your hero die. Well, he's still in the game. <laughs> FC is one of my favorite guys. Like he's this like innocent little seventeen-year-old kid who's just—he's hilarious. You'll meet him at TI3, Lumi. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to actually meeting some of the Asian players because uh, definitely so don't have a lot of time. Work to... on your Chinese. Yeah, my Chinese is fine. Conversational okay. Chinese is okay. okay. Just that when they start actually like saying things in game terms, I just get confused. Yeah. Well, game one, Rising Stars take it. MUFC, they're a team who can easily bounce back. I have no doubt in that. That so going to game two, I don't think this game one loss will affect them. It's a new game for them. The big thing here is, I mean, everything goes back to the axe pick not working at all. The offensive trial and the creep skipping never happened. The first blood just ruined the entire MUFC strategy and. Once that happened, their backup plan just wasn't solid enough. Well, game three, or game one is in the book. This is the best of three series, so game two is coming up shortly. Let's see if mbc has got something up their sleeve, or is Rising Stars gonna take a kind of basically easy 2-0 sweep in this third play finisher.
of course, I am Luminous, he is BTS Gods. We'll be back for game two momentarily. <laughs> 